So now we're gonna start some uh, simple pre-algebra kind of word problems. Uh, word problems are the, probably the most important uh, things to learn in math because all the way from pre-algebra, if you ever get to calculus, and if you do SATs, it's mostly word problems. It's understanding word problems, how to interpret it, and uh, this is kind of like the basis of the simpler word problems. So let's start with the first one, and I don't want people to do it in their heads. I have a lot of students who know the answers, and they always tell me, oh, I know what the answer is, and, and then, but the thing is, they don't know how to do it. And I always tell them, you know, when the math gets harder, you won't be able to do it in your head anymore. And I used to be guilty of that same thing. I used to try to do everything in my head. I would always know the answer, and then I didn't follow the correct way, and I realized, oh my goodness, I need to, I need to learn it the correct way, or else I, I'm very limited on how far I can get with math. So let's start with this first problem, and you have the sum of three consecutive integers is 84. Remember what integers mean? Integers is a very important a math a term. Integers is just whole numbers. You can have a positive, negative, you know, but they're just whole numbers. So one half is not an integer, but like five, eight, ten, you know, whole numbers are integers. Okay, so that's very under important to understand. So sum of three consecutive integers is 84. So there's some key words here that you realize is that there's consecutive, integer, and sum. So there's three different words that I want you to understand definitions too. Because word problems is all about definitions. If you don't understand definitions, you cannot do word problems. Sum, what does that mean? Sum means the total numbers that are added up, right? So 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 something added up, you know, is the sum. Okay. What does consecutive mean? That's a very important term. Consecutive numbers, what does that mean? Is that one after another, right? Okay. And integers we just talked about. So the way you will write this problem is, since I don't know anything, let's assume I don't know what the numbers is. Let x be the first number. Okay. Let's just call it that. I don't know what it is. It could be 85, a million. I don't know. It could be anything right now to me. Let x is the first number. So how do you find out what the second number is? Well. The key word here, consecutive. What does it mean, consecutive? It means the next number is going to be what? It's going to be one bigger than another one. Think about it. You have three consecutive numbers. Let's say 10, 11, 12, right? What's, difference, what's the relationship between the second number, which is 11, and this first number, 10? It's always one larger than the last number, right? So the second number has to be x plus 1. Because it's always going to be one bigger than the first number since it's consecutive, right? And think about the third number will be. It will be one more than that, right? So it will be x plus 2. So it's important right now to understand where all these come from. Like first number is x, second number is x plus 1, third number is x plus 2. Because of the relationship, you look at the three numbers. See, the third number is always going to be too bigger than the first number, right? So this is consecutive. So it's really important to understand it. I don't want you to just sit there and just copy it. I know everyone's just kind of just trying to rush in and get the answer. I want you to understand where this comes from. I mean, if you don't understand where it comes from, you're going to have a lot of problems with more problems. So it says now sum of three consecutive integers, 84. So what I do? Sum means I'm adding them up, right? So I just go add x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 equals 84. Because that's the sum. Equals is 84. So the sum of number 1 number 2 and number 3, the three numbers, is 84. And see how I set up the equation? See, it makes sense, okay? So we just solve it, group the x's together, 3x plus 3 equals 84, and then subtract 3 on both sides, and you'll get 81, right? And then you just divide 3 on both sides, right? Since 3x equals 81, 3 times x, okay? If you uh, don't understand how uh, this algebra works, I have another video for you on how to do algebra in general. So you divide by 3, and you'll get x equals to 27, okay? And that, what does x mean here? It means it's the first number. So since that's the first number, the second and third number has to be one after another, right? You see how it is? 27 is the first number. See, 28 is x plus 1, so it's 28 and 29, okay? So, uh, with that said, what happens if we do the sum of three consecutive odd integers is 99? Okay, where are they? How do you find that one out? Now it's odd numbers. 
What do I do? See, there's a lot of keywords here. See, when you do word problems, it's important to understand what the keywords are. You see some, you see consecutive, you see odd. That's, a, that's another one, consecutive odd. Integers, okay? So how do you start this? It's very similar to the first one. You know, let's, let's just let x be the first number. Okay? And what do the second number be? Well, think about it. If it's consecutive odd, what's the relationship between the second number and the first number is always true. Count odd numbers. Um, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, right? What's the relationship between 5, 7, and 9? They're always what? They're 2 bigger than the other one, the previous number, right? 7 is 2 bigger than 5. 9 is 2 bigger than 7. So it's always going to be plus 2. So it's x plus 2 is the second number. You see how that works? And then the third number has to be what? x plus 4. OK? So now, what, what I have to do? Sum of three consecutive integers. Sum. So I'm adding again. Sum. So x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 equals what? 99. The sum is 99. And then I again solve. I combine the x's. There's three x's, right? x plus x plus x, 3x, plus 6 equals 99. And I subtract 6 on both sides, so I get 93 equals to 3x. And x, if you divide by 3 on both sides, you get 31. And then if x is the first number, see, x is the first number, second number has to be what? x plus 2. So you add 2 to that, so you get 33. 31 plus 4 will be 35. And that's how you do these word problems. So it's very important, as you see, is, uh, reviewing, is that you have to understand when you're solving for a variable and you're creating an equation to solve for word problems, is you have to understand where, how, where, where these numbers come from, where these vari variables come from, what's the relationship between all the variables. So it's, it's very important to understand how to set it up because later on you're going to have a lot of problems if you don't know how to set it up and how things come from. There's always, in, in math, there's different ways to do things. So you always have to defend yourself when someone asks you, how do you do it? You have to have a reason for it. It has to make sense. If the teacher calls on you and say, oh, how do you do it? You can't say, I don't know. You know, I just copied the same way. You can't do that with word problems. You have to, ha you know, make sense on how you do things and how to explain it. You'll feel more confident about how you uh, attack a problem. Maybe later on when you get to calculus one day, algebra two and you know, whatever your field of math is right now, you can understand why it's so important to understand how to defend how you set up a word problem because that's really what it is. All right, uh, I'll move on to another plan now.